we evaluated overall trends in deaths due to infectious diseases. Looked at in this way, infectious diseases haven't gone away. They have increased as a cause of death in recent years after decades of decline. The threat to us at the moment from infectious diseases is probably as big as it's ever been and getting worse. The threat of infection to human mortality on a worldwide scale is still very great. We have to anticipate that there will be a major pandemic at some stage. There will be many deaths associated with that. Doomsday strains. Doomsday viruses of the apocalypse and how it will pave the way for the rule of the Antichrist on Earth. In this video, we will explore predictive programming. We will explore doomsday apocalypse scenarios and we will explore how to overcome that via the power of Jesus Christ. So stay tuned as we start right now. In the film I Am Legend, they speak of a strain of a particular virus. And if you've seen the film I Am Legend, you see that it's a dystopia style of a future where there are beings that are now vampirish style of zombies. And when you actually research why this happened in the film is because scientists were tinkering with the DNA of man looking for cures for cancer and other viruses. So as they were modifying the DNA of man, they injected man with something and it caused transhumanism in their body. The world of medicine has seen its share of miracle cures, from the polio vaccine to heart transplants, but all past achievements may pale in comparison to the work of Dr. Alice Crippen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. What's the door? So, Dr. Crippen, give it to me in a nutshell. Well, the premise is quite simple. Um, take something designed by nature and reprogram it to make it work for the body rather than against it. You're talking about a virus? Indeed, yes, in this case the measles um, virus which has been engineered at a genetic level to be helpful rather than harmful. Um, and I, I find the best way to describe it is if you, can, if you can imagine your body as a highway and you picture the virus as a very fast car um, being driven by a very bad man imagine the damage that that car could cause. Mm -hmm. Then if you replace that man with a cop, the picture changes, and that's essentially what we've done. Now, how many people have you treated so far? Well, we've had 10,009 um, clinical trials in humans so far. And how many are cancer-free? 10,009. So you have actually cured cancer? Yes, yes. Yes, we have. And transhumanism led to a new being in that individual. So now they had rage. Now they had unforgiveness. Now they had extreme anger. Now they weren't human. And they'll describe them as zombies. It's amazing how this past week it was just announced that predictive programming at its finest, that I Am Legend, is now a reality. Gene editing to help species that are under tremendous pressure from the environment in different ways. And, you know, the example that I like to think about actually is, is protecting trees, trees that are under uh, real duress due to the bark beetle. What if we could actually put uh, protective genes into the trees that would protect them or possibly going the other way, make modifications to the bark beetle so they don't have the capability to attack the trees. I think scientists have been really tethered to a few model organisms that could be manipulated genetically. And now with this tool, we have a way to change the DNA in essentially any type of organism. And so what we're seeing in the scientific world is that this is opening up opportunities to understand life in many new niches. Being able to make a single letter change in the DNA of the human genome in a way that would, uh, for example, cure genetic disease. Okay, scientists just developed a new CRISPR gene editing platform for precision medicine and cancer treatment. Just allow us to inject anything into your body to modify your DNA and we'll cure you, scientists will say. But I believe this is going to have some grave consequences as we move on into the future. 
You see, when Luke 21 11 tells you, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. I firmly believe that in the last days, the spirit of fear is going to operate in this world in a way that most cannot even imagine. And it is that spirit of fear that is going to entice people to allow the beast system to take control. And we'll talk about that as this video progresses. My family, via entertainment and via what we see on television, it is preparing generations for a long time. In the 1995 thriller, Outbreak, there was a virus called the Motaba virus. This virus was deadly. This virus destroyed, destroyed, destroyed to the point where we had to have martial law. Destroyed and destroyed and destroyed to the point that the only savior was the government. Dr. Daniels? Yeah. There's something I think you should see. This way. The patient was admitted a week ago after a car accident. He's had no contact with anyone in isolation. It's airborne. 28 days later, the rage virus. Again, tinkering with the DNA of man. Tinkering with the DNA of man leads to destruction. Yet they're tinkering with the DNA of man in your very faces and people don't bat an eye. Yet they're offering you designer babies and people don't bat an eye. Yet they're offering you mRNA technology, which is not even a vaccine, and people don't bat an eye. Well, health this morning. The FDA appears ready to green light the first treatment using gene editing. If approved, it would target sickle cell disease, which affects about 100,000 people in the U.S., many of whom are black. Few treatments are available at this point, so this has the potential to be a game changer. CNN's Meg Terrell joins us now. Uh, Meg, you spoke to a young patient who was one of the first people in the world to have his genes actually edited, which sounds terrifying, yeah. but could be a <laughs> tremendous breakthrough. Why? No, absolutely. I mean, he put it that way as well, and it'll be so exciting for everybody to get to hear from him. This is a huge moment in science and also in medicine because CRISPR itself, this gene editing tool, was really only discovered almost a decade ago. It won the Nobel Prize in 2020, and sickle cell itself has also been a neglected disease in the pharmaceutical industry. So this is a huge moment on multiple fronts. DNA modification, transhumanism in AI, has become the norm and it is here to stay and it is going to be soon offered to you as an alternative as part of the beast system in my personal opinion in a revelation 6 7 through 8 it speaks of a moment which i don't think we're there yet but it speaks of a moment and it's always good to dialogue these things and when he had opened the fourth seal i heard the voice of the fourth beast say come and see and I looked and behold a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. I want you to think about this. We're now four years removed from the initial jab that happened on earth where Many were persecuted in their jobs. Many lost their employments. Many lost their livelihoods. Families are traumatized. Children are traumatized. We're now four years past that point, And uh, things are getting relatively, quote unquote, back to normal. But if that event, which is light work compared to what is coming, has caused many in the church to even speculate that it's the mark of the beast, even though for the last four years they've bought and sold like anybody else. Even though the beast hasn't been revealed, hasn't yet. If that 
fear was able to cause that. Imagine when the fearful sights in the heavens begin to pop up left and right. Imagine when the moments of quote-unquote contact are no longer just quote-unquote contact, but are entities showing up left and right. Imagine when pandemics begin to spread to such an extent that many of these films have already predicted. Martial law is here. The cure. We need an antidote. We need a solution. Remember the days of the pandemic, man. Remember the chaos. That is light work to what is coming. But what is coming is not something you should fear. Because God has not given us the spirit of fear. In the film Quarantine, they had an Armageddon virus. The CDC declared a quarantine. Amazing how these films were way before the pandemic too. The CDC declared a quarantine. Why? Because scientists were tinkering with the DNA of man, it created a virus. And it led to global depopulation and a nightmare on Earth. In the series called Sweet Tooth on Netflix, it's promoting hybrids. It's promoting the sensitivity towards hybrid creatures, okay, that have DNA of man and animal mixed together. It's also promoting the fact that they are the ones who possibly may have the antidote to a virus that's actually destroying humanity. Everybody say hi to Gus. Hi. You met Jojo Raccoon? She can speak. Junior likes to keep watch from the raptors. And Haley's the one who swears a lot. Who swears a lot. And mimics voices. Anna and Hannah do everything together. And this is Earl. A nice bunch of ladies looked after him. And taught me to talk. Oh, and that's Maya. Watch out for her tail. Oh. Finn is our newest addition, besides you. He's had it a little rough. He can talk too, but... Only when I feel like it. Uh, okay. Otto's vision isn't so great. And he leaves quills everywhere. And this is Max. You must be a... Uh... Don't get <laughs> It's going to get so intense that Revelation 6.16 tells us, and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. You see the plans that these people have. Elon Musk tells you we have to leave Earth because something big is coming. You see Mark Zuckerberg building one of the biggest bunkers ever built. You see all of these individuals investing time and money in trying to be frozen when they die because they believe with technology and transhumanism they'll be able to live eternally once again via technology. This is Alcor's patient care bay. This is where we have all our patients stored, currently 199 humans, uh, plus almost 100 pets. So they're not really dead, they're just uh, legally dead. They're not biologically dead, obviously, because you can donate all kinds of organs that are still viable and keep other people alive. Uh, it just means that something critical has failed that we can't fix today. We come at the stage where doctors today have given up, where today's medicine and technology is not sufficient to keep you going. But we're saying instead of just disposing of the patient, uh, give them to us, we're going to stabilize them, stop them getting worse, and hold them for as long as it takes for technology to catch up and allow them to come back to life and continue living. So each patient is wrapped first of all in a sleeping bag to protect them in case we have to move them to soak up liquid nitrogen. Then they're put inside this aluminum pod where they're secured in there, so they have mechanical protection. Uh, and then they're secured in these. So these things being made of aluminum are very good temperature conductors. They're very much like people in a long-term coma, except there's no, no metabolism. Uh, so to them, you know, no time is passing. They're not alive because obviously they're not, there's no metabolism, not functioning, not moving around. So people say, well, if they're not alive, they must be dead. Well, no, there's kind of an in-between state, which is not really alive or dead. It's amazing what the spirit of fear will once again in the future cause mankind to do. Yet it was predicted. When you have the spirit of God living in you, you don't have to fear. But it is because society fears that the pandemic and the many things that were involved in it were successful. And it is that same entity, that same principality of fear 
that will lead towards AI being the one to be able to solve all of our issues. You see, AI can do a lot of things to help during viruses and during pandemics, but it also comes with diabolical, diabolical persecution. Pandemic tracking. What better way to track a pandemic than with AI? You see, with AI, if most of humanity is either one way or another tracked with a chip or a microchip or uh, something as simple as a pill that you can take that'll stay in your system and be able to tell them your biometrics, such as your blood temperature, your blood results. So many things are coming that are going to be sold to humanity as a convenience. You know, uh, why check your blood sugar every day? Just take this nano pill and you know what? It'll just tell you your blood sugar 24-7. Right? Why go to the doctor to get your blood pricked every month or every year to do a physical? Take this and this will give you your blood results instantly on the spot. These aren't things that I'm making up. These are things that are in the works and already in testing. So with AI, they'll be able to tell you who is showing symptoms of being sick, who is not showing symptoms of being sick. You see it now with Google Maps as you're driving. It tells you, that don't go this way, this way. The traffic is going to be very, very difficult. Come this way. We found a safer route. Same thing is going to happen to humanity. We're going to see that AI will tell you this country needs to be quarantined. That country needs to be quarantined. This island needs to be shut off. And ultimately, it even may lead towards moments of that place needs to be exterminated and eradicated. And people will go with it because of the spirit of fear. Facial recognitions become a hot button issue in the US. The controversial practice was recently banned in San Francisco. But few people realize that many police departments have adopted artificial intelligence, using it to analyze video surveillance footage, which can track objects and people. I've taken the 8,213 objects and I've reduced it to 80 objects. Other new technologies like sensors, drones equipped with augmented reality capabilities, and real-time crime centers are also making their way into police departments in the U.S. All that technology used for the right purposes and the right reasons I think is, is good. So while, no, I don't want to be mugged, I want to be in a community that's safe, I don't think expanding surveillance is the way to do that. There is just a lot of technology being acquired that's collecting information on everyone, regardless of whether you're involved in a crime or not. And I don't want to end up in a version of America where people are afraid to do things in life because of being watched all the time. When you are out grocery shopping, you may not realize what is watching you. Some supermarkets are using facial recognition technology to catch thieves. But as CBS 2's Christy Kalishian reports, shoppers have questions about privacy. On the front door of four Fairway supermarket locations, you'll see this sign, letting you know it collects or shares biometric information, including eye scans and voice print. It'll eventually create a minority report style of a world where, with predictive uh, AI, they will trust that AI can predict human behaviors before uh, they actually conduct it. So AI can say that race or these people, those beings, those individuals, those that are not part of the UBI, universal basic income, those that are part of this movement, that movement, they're more of a threat and they can cause destabilization in our world utopia that we've created. And they are a potential hazard. They're not even a hazard yet. They're a potential hazard. And then you'll have the film Minority Report become reality as well. Global healthcare. At some point in time, something is going to kick in around the world where the economies may unite as one, and then we may have a moment where global healthcare could become a reality. There also comes a universal basic income. So the powers that be will be the ones providing you your shelter, they'll be the ones providing you your healthcare, they will be the ones providing you your livelihood. So for you to be a part of that entity and that system, it's not just going to come free. You see, the devil knows how to trap people with conveniences. So he will sell you on the convenience first. You accept of the convenience and then the big deception hits. Oh, but if you're going to be a part of this system, you need to take this, 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 this. By the time you're done, the spirit of fear, if you're not careful, the spirit of fear will destroy you your household, your family entirely.
All of these things are chess games to these people. All of these moves are made to entrap humanity, but humanity doesn't learn. Humanity never learns. This will also pave the way for transhumanism. mRNA technology is nothing new. mRNA technology has been here for a very, very long time. The only reason we can talk about these topics is because this is a non-monetized channel. Um, So if you're watching this and you're enjoying it, uh, go ahead and press a thumbs up button and share it with a friend and their family member. And even talking about this topic as a non-monetized channel, it comes with its consequences, but it's important to talk about this topic. Listen, my family, the devil wants to be like the most high. He is not the most high. The devil is defeated. Okay, the devil is defeated. However, he knows that his time is short, so he's going to pull all of the stops. So we're just talking about a scenario that may happen, and we have to be prepared for it, okay? Satan is not omnipresent. Uh, He's not, all right? Satan is a defeated foe. Jesus has already overcome. Jesus has already won. With technology, what Satan is doing is trying to create his own version of a limited version of omnipresent. And what do I mean by that? No matter where you're parked today, no matter where you go for a walk, no matter what you do, you're globally tracked. You're globally tracked. Uh, uh, That's why whenever election season comes, I always kind of giggle a little bit because as time has progressed, I slowly have understood that these are just different corporations that are keeping us all entertained and distracted. And all of us, to many of them, all we really are are nothing more than a product. This is why you have a tracking number, your social security number. This is why when you're born, you have a birth certificate. This product just arrived. And this is why when you die, you have a death certificate. This product is already gone. This is why it's so much better to be a citizen of the kingdom that truly matters, the kingdom from above, the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Because in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, you're not just a number. No, you're his son. Because when you're a citizen of the kingdom of from above, man, We have the king of kings, man. This is why he's warned us in his scripture about the spirit of fear and about the many things that are coming. And if we're talking about this, it's only to prepare you, not for you to fear. As these moments unravel on earth, we will once again see humanity turn against each other. As these moments begin to unravel all over the earth, we will see economic turmoil like we've never seen before. This is why, brothers and sisters in the Lord, I encourage you. Not out of fear, no, out of wisdom to prepare your families. Not out of fear, but out of wisdom to prepare your ministries. Not out of fear, but out of understanding and having godly wisdom. Try to make sure that your ministry is operating on a lean budget to the most of that you can possibly do. Start preparing yourself and looking at other options to congregate, like home church. Okay, soon the brick and mortar building, as you and I know it, all right? Just as they're going to tell you that if you want to be a part of the system that you have to submit to the global health care requirement, imagine the many congregations out there that are simply surviving right now because of the 501c3. There are a lot of great ones out there. They have no ill will with the 501c. So imagine many of these congregations when they begin to crack down on them and they say, if you want to be a part of all of these benefits... You can't do this. You can't do that. It already happened when Obama was in office. They would go to churches and warn them of what they could and could not say. Good to be with you. So you've got this big summit tomorrow. Essentially, what is your message to several hundred clergy members, I understand, who will be there? Yes, we'll have uh, representatives from nine denominations who actually pastor somewhere in the neighborhood uh, of about uh, 10 million people. And uh, we are going to, first of all, uh, equip them with the information they need to know uh, about what they can say and what they cannot say uh, in the church, uh, about what they can say and what they cannot say uh, in the church, uh, about what they can say and what they cannot say uh, in the church uh, that would violate their 501c3 status with the IRS. In fact, we're going to have the IRS administrator there. We're going to have the Attorney General Eric Holder there. Uh, We're going to have the lawyers uh, organization from around the country, the ACLU, all giving ministers guidance on what they can and cannot do. So how do we get prepared, Tally? You've talked about all of these possible scenarios. You've mentioned all of this. Uh, What do I do? Listen, I'm going to give you some advice. Revelation 3.18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. 
seek the kingdom of God. When the spirit of fear comes knocking, the sleep paralysis when you're sleeping. When the spirit of fear comes knocking, be you hearing items all over your house move and you don't know what it is, rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ via his power and his glory. The same thing with all of these moments. And use wisdom. My family, use wisdom. If we know we're headed towards economic turmoil, find any possible way for you to become as free as you can from the beast system. So then when these moments arrive, you have a little bit more wiggle room to be able to be a blessing to others and continue to spread the gospel until that moment comes when you get that knock on your door. And when that knock on your door comes and persecution knocks at your door, may we be prepared then by seeking the kingdom of God now to rejoice when that moment comes. This is not a fight. This is not a battle that we can win with our own flesh. We can only win this via the power of the Holy Spirit, via the guidance of the Heavenly Father, and via the awesome victory that His Son already did. Right now where you're at, would you mind praying with me for a second? Yeah, 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 I know. You may not pray often, but would you mind praying with me for a moment? If so, let's do it right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for all of the things that you provide every day. You know our hearts and you know where we're at. You know our hearts and you know what we've done that's caused us to either backslide or not trust in you. Unforgiveness, bitterness, sleepless nights, anxiety, depression. You know what, sh what our struggles are. In the name of Jesus, search my heart right now. Tell him that. Search my heart right now and convict and point me to the things that I need to fix right now so that I can be prepared and so that I can prepare my family. Not out of fear, but out of the wisdom that only you can provide. I want to be a citizen of the kingdom from above. I don't want to be a citizen of the beast system. I don't want to be a citizen of the kingdoms of this world. I don't want to be a citizen of Babylon. I want to be a citizen of the kingdom from above. In the name of Jesus, I submit today to you. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you said that with sincere words, this is not about a magical prayer, but if you said that with sincere words, let this not just become another prayer. Let this not just become another moment. Let this become a start of something new where you now allow the Heavenly Father every day to convict you, to change you, and to set you free. And know that I love you very, very much. I'm just your brother. I'm no better than any of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for making this a part of your weekly subscription and of your weekly watch time, okay? I don't take any of you for granted. And uh, I'm just super grateful that we can talk about these topics, learn with one another, and edify each other on a weekly basis. Also, for those that are looking for a community, visit our website. It's a free community on there where you can get some daily, weekly encouragement. And also thank you for those that are considering supporting this ministry and channel. Uh, very, very grateful for that. See you in a couple of days with a new video. All right. So if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for all that you do and be encouraged. Jesus has already won.